Good evening, and thank you for joining the call. I will start with some macro commentary and then go into bank specific details. Domestic economic activity continues to strengthen over quarter three. Improving credit supply with resilient banking system is supporting the economic recovery. Gross NPS fell to a seven year low of 5% in September 2022, and net NPS dropped to a 10 year low of 1.3% of total assets. Monetary policy tightening is also likely to take pause for after another possible hike in February. On the fiscal front, the budget for 2023-24 is likely to continue to support economic recovery and help buttress overall macroeconomic stability through fiscal consolidation. While domestic activity remains strong, risk from a challenging global economic environment would remain going forward. Indian economy has shown resilience during 2022 in the face of extraordinary external shocks. India is thus likely to be the only major economy, growing in excess of 5.5% per year over the next couple of years. Coming to the quarter-specific development, some of the salient highlights for the quarter were acceleration in loan growth driven by retail segments. Our retail businesses grew by 5% quarter on quarter and corporate grew 4% quarter on quarter, driving overall retail growth of 5% quarter on quarter and 19% year on year. Within retail, vehicle finance growth was robust at 7% quarter on quarter with another quarter of record disbursements. Bharat Financial originated MFI loans and merchant loans grew by 2% quarter on quarter. Non-vehicle maintained steady growth of 6% quarter on quarter. Deposit mobilization with momentum on retail. We achieved a 3% quarter on quarter and 14% year on year growth in deposits during the quarter. We saw healthy momentum in retail deposits with retail as per LCR accelerated to 21% year on year versus 16% in previous quarter and was up at 6% quarter on quarter. All key segments of branch banking, affluent and NRI contribute towards the retailization momentum. Stable asset quality. Our gross slippages during the quarter reduced to 1,467 crores from 1,572 crores quarter on quarter. Our restructured book too reduced from 1.5% to 1.25% quarter on quarter. Our gross NPA is down to 2.06% and PCR remains healthy at 71% with net NPA at 0.62%. Our contingent provisions are at 2,192 crores with a total loan related provision at 130% of GNPS. Our credit cost has reduced from 44 basis points to 40 basis points quarter on quarter. Healthy profitability of the franchise. Our core operating profits grew by 20% year on year driven by improved NIMS as well as strong client fees. Net interest margin was at 4.27% versus 4.24% quarter on quarter. Client fee income grew by 28% year on year, driven by retail fees. Our cost to income was steady at 43.9% and our PPOP margin remained healthy at 5.7%. Our profit after tax grew by 9% quarter on quarter and 58% year on year to 1,964 crores with annualized EPS of Rs 101 per share. Our return on assets improved to 1.87 and return on equity crossed 15% mark in quarter 3 for the first time in 3 years. Now coming to individual businesses. Vehicle finance. The vehicle finance business continues to achieve a record disbursement every quarter and the third quarter has been the best ever by a significant margin. The disbursements have been brought back across all vehicle categories. Disbursement during the quarter were at 12,713 crores, driven by 19% quarter on quarter and 44% year on year. The cumulative nine month financial year 23 disbursements were at 33,450 crores and are up by 52% year on year and already ahead of full, full year disbursement for last year and one more quarter with one more quarter to go. The vehicle finance loan growth as a result continue to accelerate with the robust 7% quarter on quarter growth and a year year growth and YOY growth improving from 13% to 18% during the quarter. Within vehicle categories, commercial vehicles, utility, vehicles, cars and construction equipment saw more than a 40% year on year growth in disbursements. Two and three wheeler segments too, which was stagnant since COVID, saw demand coming back with healthy quarter on quarter and YOY disburse, growth in disbursements. Vehicle asset quality remains steady with gross slippages at 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9, 0.9,
versus 1.1% cotton and cotton. Standard slippages were higher cotton and cotton due to impact of mining duty in Orissa on freight availability. The duty has now been rolled back and freight availability has started improving. The restructured book in retail finance reduced by 400 crores to 1,858 crores from 2,270 crores quarter and quarter. The reduction in restructured was broadly equally driven by collection and slippages. The collection efficiency of the remaining restructured book customers was stable at 84%. Overall, we continue to see healthy operating environment for the freight industry and thus we expect to maintain our disbursement momentum in the current quarter as well as supported by new year purchases and income tax benefits. Bar of Financial Inclusion Limited. Our microfinance and merchant acquiring loan originated through Briefle grew by 16% year on year and 2% quarter on quarter. The, our microfinance businesses disbursements were at 8,928 crores, growing 27% year on year. The disbursements were lower by possibly a few hundred crores due to bunching of festivals in the first half of the quarter. The member addition, nevertheless, were at 5,93,000 for quarter 3, up by 20% quarter on quarter, of which December was the best month of the year so far. The disbursement for these members would get gather pay from the current quarter onward. MFI standard book net collection efficiency for quarter 3 was strong at 99%. The gross slippages during the quarter were down to at 5,409 crores compared to 435 crores during the previous quarter. Our 30 to 90 DPD, including restructured customers, were at 2.4 on December 22 compared to 2.0 at the end of September 22. The increase was largely contributed by the eastern states. We have slowed down on disbursements in these geographies with increased focus on collections. Overdue position for vehicle continues to be better than industry at all DPD levels. We continue to expand our merchant acquiring business under the banner of Bharat and Super Shop. Portfolio sold through Beefil under this business has grown 16% sequentially to 3,094 crores with 4.9 lakh active customers. A liability book sourced from customer service through Beefil has increased by 65% year on year to reach 1,633 crores through 1.35 crore accounts, savings accounts, RD, FD and car with us. Overall, we continue to be cautiously pivot towards growth on the microfinance business. The rural economy continues to improve. However, the pace of improvement seems to be slower than expected. We continue to leverage diesel franchise to diversify into allied businesses and within microfinance, the disbursements are driven by lower ticket sizes and reducing geographical concentrations. Global diamond and jewelry business. The business continues to maintain its global leadership position of being the largest lender to, to this industry. Our diamond portfolio saw growth of 20% year on year. Asset quality remains pristine with no restructuring and SMA1 or SMA2 customers. We remain watchful on the implications of the prolonged Russia-Ukraine crisis and remain compliant with all the extent guidelines in facilitating cross-border trade. The COVID relaxation in China is likely to help the overall demand for in this year. Corporate bank. A corporate business delivered another quarter of healthy growth and no asset quality concerns. We achieved a growth of 20% year on year during the quarter with no net slippages. The growth was broad based across segments with large corporate growing 3% quarter on quarter, mid corporate 4% quarter on quarter, and small corporate 11% quarter on quarter, resulting in the overall growth of 4% quarter on quarter. The segment driving the loan growth was steel, services, petroleum segments. Growth in small corporates were driven, driven by continuous scale-up of our SME segment and agribusiness season, seasonality resulting in ramp up of our commodity finance book. We continue to actively reprice the loan book. Our yield in the corporate book improved by 37 basis points during the quarter. The portion of A and above rated customers is now 74% compared to 72% year on year. The overall weighted average ratio to improve to 2.64 from 2.67 on YOY basis. The gross slippages from the corporate saw reduction in both standard as well as restructured accounts. Overall slippages are down to down from 179 crores to 119 crores quarter on quarter. Exposure to fresh telco was stable at 17.3 billion, including fund-based exposure of 10 billion and balanced non-funded ex based exposure. We remain watchful on the developments at this account. Overall, we continue a journey of corporate growth driven by higher rated granular, shorter duration loan book. 
the asset quality performance remains comfortable and growth growth broad based across client segments other retail assets are non vehicle non microfinance retail loan book two saw growth momentum accelerating during the quarter to 23% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter the growth was driven by credit card personal loan as well as steady momentum in business banking our credit card spend continue to remain strong with spend of 20000 crores for the quarter as a result our credit card loan book grew by 9% quarter on quarter our new acquisition remains robust with around 88000 acquisitions in december 22 we also recently announced world's first tripartite co-branded card in partnership with qatar airways and british airways we have done a pilot launch of our own home loans in september and we progress on rolling it out against various mark- markets in the country with this this disbursement of over 200 crores in the quarter and aim it to scale it up meaningfully in the coming quarter overall the share of consumer banking loan has increased to 16% of overall loans now we expect this to continue to increase as we scale up the home loans merchant acquisition to maintain traction on cre- and maintain traction on credit card and personal loans now coming to liability our deposit grew by 3% quarter on quarter and 14% year on year we saw healthy acceleration in the retail deposit mobilization during the quarter our retail deposit as per lcr group accelerated to 21% year on year from 16% in the previous quarter the absolute addition of retail deposit is 7978 crores which was also the highest in the last six quarters the share of retail deposit as a result increased from 41.2% to 42.4% during the quarter all our business units including branch banking affluent and nri contributed towards the growth the growth momentum comes in the in the backdrop of the heightened competitive intensity in the industry our new initiatives affluent and nri banking saw growth accelerating during the quarter affluent banking net relationship value grew 5% quarter on quarter to 66700 crores of which deposit grew by 8% quarter on quarter to 41950 crores our nr segment to maintain the momentum with deposit growing by 16% quarter on quarter to rupees 32900 crores we also recently went live on the income tax portal tin 2.0 and our customers can now pay direct taxes instantly to our indigent bank accounts using our digital channels and our branch network our kafa ratio has was at 41.9% versus 42.1% year on year the kafa deposits of group in current accounts were as saving accounts contracted sequentially the saving account contraction was due to customers moving deposit towards fixed deposits and we letting go of some expense, some of the expensive and bulky accounts this also ensures continuing the increase uh, containing the increased cost in the savings cost of savings account and as we have taken the savings account rate hikes in october the share of top 20 customers in the overall deposits has also come down from 17% to 15% quarter on quarter we opened 64 branches during the quarter taking the branch count to 2384 and aiming towards closing the year at 2450 to 2500 branches contribution of the certification of deposit low at 3.6% of deposit we continue to maintain healthy asset surplus liquidity of about 40 44000 crores during the quarter with liquidity recovery ratio of 117% overall we remain focused on the retail deposit mobilization despite the challenging environment we continue to invest in the franchise both through distribution capability as well as offering competitive rates the new initiatives branch delivery availability availability of long term stable refinance sources as well as surplus liquidity on the balance sheet has helped us to comfortably fund our acceleration in the loan growth digital traction overall the digital strategy of the bank is geared at driving three major objectives a build direct to client digital platform b drive superior client engagement and c transforming existing lines of business the building their direct to client platform the easy credit platform direct platform marketing led business in pl and card has grown 6x yoy and 75% sequentially quarter on quarter the partnership business continued to grow strongly and grew 5x yoy and 17% sequentially quarter on quarter more than 35% of the business in savings account and card by volume is now digital and partnership led drive superior customer experience and engagement through digital platforms digital tr- 
transaction intensity continued to grow with 93% of transaction processed digitally and 74% of service requests processed digitally. The mobile app continued to show a robust user base growth of 26% year on year in terms of monthly active user base. The engagement of the mobile app will further accelerate as the banks integrate the state of art event driven real time engagement stack in the app in quarter 3. We further enhanced the Indus Easy credit for individual stack with integration of new fintech partners, leveraging the open banking capabilities of the stack, increased in SPP percentage to 30% through advanced analytics. Transform existing lines of business and making them more efficient. We continue to digitize the business with nearly all deposits and well business done digitally. With Easy Credit Stack now, we have 95% of the credit, credit card sourced digitally and nearly 80% of the loans, personal loans sourced digitally. Nearly 50% of small business banking is digital and well and on track to grow at 80% plus by the end of financial year with addition of full working capital product suit. Close to 80,000 accounts were voted digitally every month across personal loans, credit card, savings accounts by the bank. Sustainability. Sustainability is core to our strategy and we continue to progress on our agenda of sustainable banking. To promote greater trust on our ESG linked products, we are, we are launching a series of ESG linked products. We have already launched two such products including EV Finance for passenger cars and Green Fixed Deposit. We also have a couple of more initiatives planned for launch in the coming quarter such as Green Personal Loan for Solar, Rooftop Finance and new platform supporting women entrepreneurs. During the quarter, the bank's board also approved and upgraded a robust ESG risk frame assessment policy and governance framework for all our corporate exposures. This will help us prudently manage bank exposure to high ESG risk industries as the country, country transitions to a low carbon economy. Bank has also selected for a pilot of TNFD, Task Force of Nature Related Financial Disclosures, a UN supported initiative of sustainable agriculture. Our efforts are well acknowledged and this quarter saw us release of our ESG ratings from two marquee international rating agencies, Carbon Disclosure Project CDP and S&P Global Rating. And I'm happy to share that we have once again scored the highest rank among the five large private sector banks. Now coming to the financial performance for the quarter. Net interest income grew by 18% year on year, broadly in line with the loan growth. Net interest margin improved sequentially to 4.27% from 4.24% quarter on quarter. Our loan yields improved by 24 basis points quarter on quarter and yield on overall assets improved by 34 basis points quarter on quarter. The cost for deposits increased by 37 basis points uh, and the cost of fund increased by 31 basis points during the quarter. The core team maintained strong traction growing at 28% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter. The treasury income was positive and stable quarter on quarter. The overall other income grew by 11% year on year and 3% quarter on quarter. Share of retail fees remained healthy at a 71% of the total fee. Our total revenue for the quarter was at 6 rupees 6,572 crores with 16% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter growth. Operating expenses grew by 4% quarter on quarter. We continue to invest in talent and we hired 1,800 employees during the quarter and around 8,500 during the current year. Our overall cost to income ratio was stable at 43.9% quarter on quarter. The operating profit for the quarter was at 3,686 crore, going 11% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter. The PPOP margin to loan continues to be healthy at 5.7%. Our core PPOP grew by 20% year on year. On the asset quality and the provisioning front, our provisions for the quarter were further reduced to 1,065 crores and the provisions to loans are thus now at down to 39 basis points now. The gross NPA were down to from 2.11% to 2.06% quarter on quarter and net NPA was stable at 0.62% with healthy provision coverage ratio of 71%. The slippages during the quarter were down to 1,467 crores from 1,572 crores. We utilized 461 crores from contingent provisions during the quarter with regular contingent provisions of 2,192 crores or 0.8% of loans. Cumulatively for 9 months finance year 23, we had 1,833 crores of slippages from the restructured book. We have utilized 1,136 crores of contingent provisions so far. 
as the incremental slippages from the restructured pool continue to be range bound, we are comfortable with the contingent provisions. The net security receipts have reduced to 56 basis points from 67 basis points quarter on quarter, and we carry provisions in line with the extent regulatory requirements. Total loan related provisions are at 2.7% of loans or 130% of gross NPS. Our SMA 1 and SMA 2 book was at 8 basis points and 24 basis points respectively. Total SMA 1 and SMA 2 are down to 32 basis points from 58 basis points quarter on quarter. Profit before the profit after tax for the quarter was at 1,964 crore, growing 9% quarter on quarter and 58% year on year. Our CRAR, including profits, remain healthy at 18.01%. Retain on assets continued upward trajectory from 1.80 to 1.87% quarter on quarter. Our return on equity has improved to 15.2%. Overall, we are becoming, coming towards the end of our planning cycle 5 strategy and outcomes so far have been consistent with our objectives outlined in our earlier communications. We will be formulating our planning cycle 6 strategy in the current quarter and will present to you the counters in the next analyst call. The key themes that will guide our strategy would be deposit retailization will continue to be the cornerstone of PC62. We will add new growth boosters for increasing customer acquisition including digital 2.0 offerings. Loan momentum should accelerate in PC6 with stable macro environments. The acceleration would be driven by retail segments. We will continue to invest in franchise through distribution, technology, employees, adding, adding and scaling new initiatives to diversify a revenue pool. We have maintained our PPOP margins in most turbulent and aim is to achieve that in PC6 too. The overall return ratios have improved over the last couple of years and should continue to improve with normalization of provisions in PC6. While we focus on scaling up our businesses further, the growth will be achieved with constant focus on governance and sustainability of the franchise. With this, we can open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the <laughs> telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is closed. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Maru Kajania from Nuama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, so, uh, so on, first of all, what are your views on the new ECL circular? Because you already have a good stock of contingent provisions, and provisions to loans are running at 2.7. Uh, plus, you uh, all banks have been doing mock runs on IFRS, is what we are told. So, how does that affect? How does the ECL circular affect you? Even some rough uh, estimate would be good enough either positively or negatively? Well, it's, it's too early to comment on it. I think the circular has just come out. But I think uh, what you need to understand is that there are certain parameters which will RBI will define, which each bank will have to follow. So each one bank has been following their own process. So I think there will be some standardization which will happen as a consequence of this, this new note. We have to give our feedback by the month of February. And as a consequence, a new model will evolve, which our RBI and the banks will back test. And as a consequence, a new model will emerge. I agree with you. The bank carries, uh, you know, uh, very comfortably on as well as good capital ratio. So I think we should be able to, to manage this over a period of time. But uh, it's too early to comment whether how it will happen. But I'll ask Ramu to, to also give his views. Uh, Ramu, management. Yeah, hi. So, you know, um, basically I think the, the discussion paper that's come from RBI has several questions that they raised the participants, the banks to you know, address or to, you know, come back to them all. And then we would get the guidelines as to what the minimum levels would be required to be, but then we can develop a models. No doubt, yeah. as you mentioned, we have been running these and we've been testing it. Uh, we'll have to look at the probability of defaults and what else will happen. We come out of COVID, the probability of defaults may look higher, but it will get normalized over the next one or two years as the asset quality is improved across the banking system. So, we, where we are at our different portfolios and where we are located, 
uh, and over the years of work, it should be comfortably placed. So I think we should be able to work it out. But it depends purely on how RBI, uh, you know, gives the basic benchmark. And we, once we have that, then we'll be able to work out our models, have it validated as expected by RBI, and then we'll have to take decisions on what uh, requirements are. But don't expect a material impact as we have looked at our numbers, so we have to wait for the guidelines from RBI. Sure, sure. Thanks. And my next question is generally on sector outlook and then how that comes down to industry and bank. So obviously loan growth has been very strong for the sector and given that fourth quarter is busy season, it may continue to be strong. But do you see any deceleration or any big time or fall off in loan growth say in the first or second or third quarters because it's remained strong for a very long period of time? And that in, in that back context, what what would the guidance for your own loan and deposit growth be? So if you look at the businesses in which we are in, I think our 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 vehicle finance business is coming from cyclical lows. So I think you are seeing a fantastic, you know, uh, vehicle finance growth across the vehicle categories. And I think uh, quarter one is relatively a slower growth for them, but otherwise they have done relatively very, very well. And I think that growth should continue in the next year also. So that's something which we are hopeful of. And uh, we are, and we have diversified that book to such an extent that I think we are not dependent on one single product uh, to, to give our growth. So I think that's why this growth is coming in. Uh, microfinance is a, you know, is an industry which can see growth. But again, we are diversifying that industry and we are seeing the growth. I think diamond growth depends on the, on the, on the global, global, uh, you know, environment, and we have to see how the how the growth comes in. And going back to the corporate as well as this, our focus is on the MSME and the SME segment where we are seeing growth coming. And on the retail, I think the consumption story continues in India, and we are seeing a huge growth uh, on on the on the thing. On the loan, I think our our assumption is given where we are and what we are doing. I think. Uh, we should see a growth of about 20 to 25 percent, and we are we are going to present the present our our, our PC6 strategy very shortly in the next quarter. So you would see that growth and a CD ratio anywhere between 85 to 93 percent. And would that require a lot of uh, hikes in deposit rates from your on, or you think it cools down now uh, for the sector and then for you? I think uh, we, we've always said in the house view has been that there will be one more hike which will come in the month of February of around 25 to 35 basis points. And then we have to see how the global play, plays out and how the Indian inflation plays out. And I think we are very certain that I think then I think the stand should train to neutral. And I think we should see see the scaling uh, scaling down of the, of the deposit rates maybe by the third quarter of this financial year, not earlier than that. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kunal Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so now uh, firstly, with respect to the asset quality on the consumer finance side, so that has been some deterioration on a quarter on quarter basis, and particularly most of the product in vehicles in the option of lower write-offs or any higher slippages out there in the vehicle finance portfolio? I think uh, the vehicle finance, if you look at rest are very small. The, the, the only thing where the slippages have happened is really on the commercial vehicle side of the, the heavy, medium and heavy commercial side. And it was because of the Odisha, Odisha issue on the duty which has been rolled back by the government. And you should see that uh, coming back to no normal, normal during this quarter itself. Of course, uh, the central loan portfolio continues to, to 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 suffer, and you know we have a we have an eight percent delinquency there, and we've not done any sale to the ERP also. That's something which you would have noticed on the on the consumer side. Yeah, yeah, okay. So particular CBC, uh, in fact, car uh, tractors, tractors are also seeing some kind of a deterioration. You see that coming back this quarter itself. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, secondly, in terms of the deposit rates, okay, so in fact, uh, uh, maybe uh, earlier, maybe almost uh, eight quarters back, there was a good gap which was there with the other uh, private banks. Uh, commendably, now we look at it, we are almost catching up with them and it's very near to where some of the leading private banks are. 
So what would be the stance out there? Maybe uh, uh, do we see that, okay, to accelerate further deposits, we will need to have a more gap with the private banks or uh, this seems to be good enough for, for the overall growth which is required um, uh, on, the, on the lending side? Our, our stated intent was that we will have a 50 to 75 uh, basis point gap. But what we have observed is that people have fought in and we were able to mobilize deposits and retailization with our branch expansion. Our branches were able to retailize deposits. So that's something we, we did not feel the need of, uh, of increasing our, our deposit rates in the retail side. We continue to watch that every every month. And if we feel that our retail retailization is going down, we will increase the rate. So we feel right now there is a big opportunity in the senior citizen segment. And I think where we find that if you get the senior citizen account, you also get the savings account with the large balance. So I think there are opportunities and there are cluster of opportunities which we go after and we feel that. In the NRI, we fought all the opportunities. When we are able to garner that opportunity and you would have seen our NRI book grow to about 32,400 close from 29,000 crores. So I think we see opportunities and strike the opportunities. And I think uh, as of now, I think we will, we will do some changes, but those changes will be immediately not at a broad scale level, but at a specific tenor or a specific segment level. Sure, sure. Okay. So broadly, maybe currently there is no need and we will just evaluate if so there is a need uh, to no, further... No, I did not say that. I said that we, will, we always... Segment, we feel there are opportunities and we will increase the rate in a short while from now in those segments where we feel we can get very good... Yeah, so more so to do with the outlook on names. Okay, so if we maybe go ahead and do the deposit... Uh, Highs uh, uh, and given fixed rate nature on the lending side, uh, should we see that okay, uh, margins should be more or less over here or decline from the current level? We should always say that our margins are between 4.15 to 4.25. I've always maintained that. Don't get carried away with 4.24, 4.27. I've always said 4.15 to 4.25. PPOP margins will be greater than 5%. We've been above 5.5%. Yeah. But I've always said that in PC5, we will continue to maintain. And that's the stability which we want to bring to our business and predictability which we want to bring to our business. Sure. And one last question on restructured. So, in fact, of the improvement of 24 basis points, it's in uh, 12 dips is kind of a slippage from the restructured. So, uh, on on the balance pool, uh, you said that okay, collection efficiency is better on the uh, restructured side. But uh, but how should we look at it? Uh, do we see the trend continuing in terms of the uh, slippage from the restructured pool? It will be, be very bare minimum. So if you look at it, it's only going down and will continue to slip further. Yeah, so I think by the end of this, the quarter four, you will almost see the end of the, by quarter four or quarter one, you'll see the end of the restructured book for us. And that will be the end of it. And I think we will come back to normal uh, credit cost as, as a consequence of that. Okay. Okay. Got that. Yeah. Thanks a lot and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Suman. Um, uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, the, the first one is, I may have missed your comments, but uh, when I look at the uh, sequential NPLs in CV, construction equipments, and MFI, uh, those have gone up yeah. uh, sequentially. Um, you know, even though I think uh, initially your outlook that you talked about was was sounding, uh, you know, quite optimistic. So, I wanted to understand: was there uh, any technicality, or the write-offs have been lower in this quarter? So, uh, you know, was it the reason why GNP moved up? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one is there's no ARP sale on on the on the on the, on the CV business which we've done on the vehicle finance business. Number two, I think uh, there's a specific uh, Orissa issue which came up and that impacted the business and which will which will has got resolved and you'll see the rollback happening at this point. This was which portfolio the Orissa issue? issue? The CV CV one, the so vehicle for the commercial vehicle. Otherwise, you see the uh, on the others you will see the rollback happening this quarter. And 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 why would the MFI uh, NPLs go up? Uh, yeah, or, or it was in the eastern sector where we found the collections because of the holidays and the grouping of the holidays, the NPA slippages happen, and it's very difficult to roll them back or three installments at a time, and that's why the slippages happen at that point. So I think another quarter, another quarter of pain, and I think MFI should be back. 
on the food that's helpful this is just just one more point on this is a follow on uh, is it possible to know the 30 dpd 60 dpd and i'm a fact so i i i i will you know, i will i will i have told that uh, 30 to 90 dpd is 2.4% uh, of the total book 30 to 90 dpd in mfi is 2.4% Okay, understood. That's helpful. Thank you. Uh, the other question is on the uh, current account deposits, which saw the second consecutive quarter of strong growth. Um, so, can you just throw some color as to what's driving this? Well, always remember that current accounts are a volatile business. Yeah. yeah. We specialize in two, dis- three distinct areas in the current account business. One is we are a very good escrow business leader, specifically in the real estate vela part of it. Second. We are very strong in NPFC's uh, cash management business. We are very, very strong on it. And third, on the trade asset part of the current account, we are very strong. That, and as a consequence, we get trade. So you will see some flows which come out there as a consequence, and we get a lot of, uh, sorry, on the last part, we get a lot of dividend mandates on the government mandate business, which we do very well in the public sector undertaking. So I think you will see some flows coming in. Normally, you should see a standard flow, which was around 38 to 40, now moving up to 43 to 45. And that is our standard flow. And you will see some flows which come in, and they help us in managing our cost of deposit, but they are not stable to some extent the way you call stable with deposit. So you will continue to see wallet, but they do, they are part of our core business. They get out because we do these businesses of cash management. You know that cash management money cannot last for us, last with us for more than three days or four days because that's for the new current account guidelines. Or, and Vera is with us, it's a, it's a part of our DNA to do the real estate and we get the Vera businesses as a part of the consequence of that. And of course, the trade effects is a part of our core businesses. So we follow this as a process and I think that's where the current account business is growing for us and we focus on these areas to get the business. Uh, thanks, Roman. The other question is on the yields in corporates, uh, which is... Rahul, sorry to interrupt you. Can I request you to speak through the handset? Um, <coughs> is, it, is it any better? Uh, yeah, Rahul, it's better now. Thank you. Uh, the other question is on the yields on the corporate portfolio, which moved up quarter on quarter nicely. Um, I just wanted to understand, um, you know, what will be the rating profile of these corporates where we are able to uh, pass on the, the cost and uh, can it sustain over the next few quarters? So Rahul, uh, the, as we have said earlier, bulk of the corporate book is a uh, floating rate book. So it's not about to uh, rating profile or anything as such. And every quarter, uh, you know, uh, you have to reprice the book and that uh, continuous repricing is happening. So over the entire book, you will see the repricing happening as the, every quarter the uh, book uh, comes up for renewal. And at every renewal, the repricing comes into play. And the benchmark is a shortened benchmark or a year plus? Uh, so it varies depending on the corporate demand. Uh, if you see overall corporate book, uh, almost 40% of the book is linked towards MCLR. And within MCLR, it varies from three months to one year. Uh, and every corporate loan has to be repriced within a year and uh, re-evaluated within a year. So you can't take it beyond one year. Uh, another 40% is external benchmark linked. Uh, the external, in our book, uh, the external benchmarks typically are the GSX uh, and MyBor, etc. So that book gets immediately repriced. And balance 20% uh, is uh, short term in nature. So while it is a fixed rate book, but it uh, gets repriced within a short period of two months to six months. So there also you get repricing happening in a short period of time. That's very helpful, uh, Inujit. Just a last question on the ECL. Uh, so uh, we were under this impression that the parallel run was happening for the last few years, particularly for the private banks. Um, so what really has changed in the discussion paper uh, that RBS put out, um, um, which may or may not have impact on the numbers? You said it may not have any impact on the numbers, but any particular observation that you want to point out uh, to, to us? Um, I think every bank was doing something on their own. Now the parameters are going to be governed by the RBS, some of the parameters. And I think uh, we will have to backtest this model basis with certain parameters which the RBI will standardize across the industry. So that's one. Number two, I think uh, they will take into account what has happened during the COVID period and will the probability of default uh, get affected as a consequence of the COVID period. So I will just ram you. Just I'd comment to what uh, you mentioned. So see, we have we could you know banks depending on the data they have they could use behavioral models or they could use standard you know SMA approaches. So each of us has followed, could have, during the period that we did this, the sons, we have followed our own approaches based on the data quality, the richness of data, and time length of data that we had. 
we have to wait to see how RBI determines that. So, you know, for example, we have four decades of data for our way to finance portfolio, as an example. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, the, that's what we need because during, in that paper, they mentioned there'll be certain levels that they want to have of the provision requirements. It may not be at the same level as today as asset quality, you know, the IRAC norms are. So, those are the things we have to fine tune, but we have, we have all the data, we have worked on it. So, we, once we get clarity on that from RBI, we'll be able to put it together. And this is the early estimate, it looks under control. Uh, just, just, to, just to extend this point, so um, let's say you know uh, the the property or default indeed comes on the higher side because we still have some of the portfolios which are maybe above the historical trend in the delinquencies and credit cost. Uh, would it impact the pricing of the loans as well? Because this would also be a number that would be going into the pricing of loans, uh, and would it put you at any disadvantage versus the market? Not at all. I don't think so. Microfinance, we are already the lowest. CV, not at all, because no. we are we are benchmark and the best in class in the market on the CV. So I don't think corporate loans. Corporate loan, we have not seen the flows at all. You see our corporate book. Hmm. You see the and see the flows this time also. There is nothing diamonds. There is nothing. Yes, there is nothing on corporate. Understood. Got it. Uh, someone very helpful. Uh, thank you so much and, and good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Good evening. Um, so my first question is on the MFI book. Can you quantify the disbursement? I think I missed it uh, from your opening remarks. It's about, yeah, so I'll just tell you the number. It's about 8,200 and... Uh, so one second. 8,928 crores. And this is only for the MFI, right? Not merchant yeah. advances in... Uh, no. 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 So in the investor presentation, we give a slide on MFI. Oh. So then sequentially, you know, one would have expected the book to go up. Uh, uh, so has have you seen like accelerated repayments or something? Basically, I'm trying to see uh, when the we would see... The loss is about 3,000 crores a quarter, a month, a month. A month. A month. A month. That's the runoff yeah. on the book, yeah. We have a shorter duration book and the runoff yeah. as well. And what is the outlook on this disbursement? You see it going up? Uh, I think this will go to about 11,000 crore. So that's the maximum it will go to. It will never be a 15,000 crore this first thing. So the growth will be limited to about 1,500 to 2,000 crore a quarter. Yeah, yeah. No, actually the expectation was that in this quarter itself you'd see that kind of accretion. Uh, so I was just trying to get a sense of the growth going forward. Because of the holidays in the month of October and the bunching up of the holidays. So October okay. was a complete write-off with 10 days working, 12 days working days. November it came back a little bit, but December is where we saw the 3,300 crores of disbursement coming back. Understood, understood. And in terms of slippage, how much of it was from MFI this quarter? Uh, I'll just give you the number. Uh, we'll upload a table, Abhishek, with the segment by slippages. Okay, okay. Like uh, perfect. And uh, just one more thing on this telecom exposure to this particular company where you have, I think, uh, 20 billion rupee outstanding. Is yes, it 100%? 1700 crore. 1700 crore. So it is entirely provided for, right? There's no, nothing. They provided 990 crore. Funded, okay. Funded exposure is provided. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, got that. Uh, right, I think I think yeah, those those were my okay. Sorry, one more question, just quickly squeezing it in. Uh, contingent provisions. I think two or three quarters back, you had called out that you would probably use around 1100 to 1300 crores or something right. of that order. Right. Uh, you've almost used, I think, around 900. Yeah, 1100. So incrementally, we should see that number. 1300 crores or something. We'll not cross that number. No, okay, got it, got it. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. Next question is from the line of Saurav from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, one question on the slide 18 which you've given. So one is, uh, you know, what would be the overall series you'll be earning on this entire LCG book? And there is this low investment grade 4%. Could you quantify what that is? I'll ask Arun to answer this. Arun runs our uh, the whole business. Yeah. No, so, sorry, what was that? The NC book. How much of revenues you get from NCDG? Yes. 
Okay, so it's all uh, client related businesses on the LCBG as well as uh, mostly on the derivatives uh, because you're classifying that actually in that three slide if you see. So there is a slide on trade and uh, trade fees out there. Uh, so uh, I think trade remittances was uh, something like 201 odd crores and then FX on account of client income was uh, 250 odd crores. So that's what we get. So it was around 60, uh, you know, of the total fee pool, of core fee pool of uh, 1940. So this is around uh, 450 odd crores out of that. Oh, okay. And most of these exposures you've written public sector and all, but what will be the sectoral exposures here? Sorry, what what was that? Most of the exposures are sectors which these will be happening into, like. <laughs> That's a mix of both. So trade is primarily corporate accounts, right? So the, because it's typical LCs and uh, stuff like that. Bank guarantees are typically the uh, the PSUs. Okay. And sir, this last question with this below investment grade, which is 2%. Uh, That's to the telecom one that we just referred, yeah. the um, non-fund-based facility to the telecom company that we have. So of the four, one is telecom. What is the other three? Uh, so there are smaller accounts. There is no one accounts. There is no one particular large chunk account there. Won't be able to disclose the names as such. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of MB Mahesh from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, just a couple of questions. One, um, on, if you look at the direction of these cost of deposits, which has kind of increased by about 35 basis points, uh, about 30 basis points this quarter, um, could you just guys kind of give us a rough indication as to how does this change over the next few quarters based on the current deposit rate and the maturity that you have in your books? So I think uh, you will continue to see, uh, you know, if the, if the in February, if the rate of deposit changes, I think you will see a you will see a see a rate change and currently I think uh, you should expect a 15 to 25 basis points rate hike uh, or 15 to 25 deposit theory hike on the overall book as a consequence of that. So, man, just the question is the other way around. In assuming that there is no change uh, this quarter, if you assume that it's about uh, let's say about 35 basis points. Would you say that the number increases to 50 basis points next quarter, or do you sense that the number kind of remains where it is at 35 each quarter? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's more of the latter. I think you will have around 30 odd basis points increase somewhere, you know, maybe five basis points here or there on the number that uh, we had as an increment uh, in the last quarter. And Mahesh, you will also have to note that last quarter we have taken a savings rate hike, uh, which reprices the whole base immediately. So that is not going to happen every quarter unless you raise the rates again. Perfect. Okay. Uh, second question, sir. Um, in the past, you kind of mentioned in that you will be kind of reducing this balances that you have on the balance sheet on the cash side. Uh, this again, it it remains reasonably at a high number at about fifty four thousand crores. But it, it actually, it's a, it's a daily average was around forty four forty four thousand crores. This we carry excess liquidity and we have been saying that as the loan growth accelerates, uh, the excess SLR will keep coming down. But at the same time, we will continue to carry uh, 25 to 30,000 crores of uh, surplus liquidity at all points in time as a manner of prudence and conservative uh, building buffers on the balance sheet. Indriji, but this, this book sits in the, it earns any interest or it doesn't? So, if you see the split of the 44,000 crores, uh, so roughly around uh, 25 to 30,000 crores uh, is in the form of excess SLR. So these are the GSEC securities which we carry uh, beyond what is required from the regulatory requirements. So they give us returns in terms of whatever the GSEC yields that are there in the market. And the balance uh, 10 to 15,000 crores is pure cash uh, that is kept uh, beyond the uh, uh, CRR requirements. Okay, perfect. Uh, and Suman, just last question to you. Uh, any any com any conversation with the RBI on the extension of tenor? No, Mahesh. There's been no communication from RBI. Okay, okay. Done. Thanks. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manish Shukla from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Contingency provision of 2192 crores, how much is restructured asset provision? How much restructured asset provision? These are all of, no, no, uh, see, uh, 
Manish, what we have to carry is, uh, uh, if you remember the RBI circular, we have to carry 10% of the restructuring, 5%, 5%. 5 to 10% depending on the security and all. So that is only what is required to carry by the regulation. So and that's around yeah. 500 crores, 458 crores. So that is then there is 1000 crores for uh, telecom assets and balance is uh, pure, uh, you know, contingent of surplus. So, yeah, so both that uh, word uh, telecom as well as 500 crores is part of this 2192 crore. Correct, correct, correct. correct. Yeah, okay. Uh, secondly, on the yield on your consumer loans, if I look at first nine months, December over March, uh, that has moved up by only about 32 basis points. While I do appreciate that it's a fixed rate book, the book itself has grown 17% in the last nine months. But the yields have not moved. I mean, could you just explain what's happening there? So I, I think you have to understand that the credit card yields have shown a decline over the last four quarters yes. where the revolving rates have gone, come down on the credit card book. So that affects the book in a big way. Second, I think uh, the in the CV business, the scooter loan businesses of the high yielding business has come down, scooter loan and all. And I think the, the yield has remained sta almost static while the disbursement in the in the other parts would have increased, but the scooter loan business or the high yielding, the three wheeler businesses, those portfolios have come down and the disbursements have come down on that businesses because they are still coming out of the COVID. So that's number two. Number three, on the microfinance side, the disbursements have not been very high and during this phase. And I think uh, the runoff of the book has happened. The growth has been very, very different at this point of time. So I think you will see that growth coming back and that's why we are so comfortable when we give a range of 4.15 to 4.25, to so we see will see the growth coming back in these sectors and they will they will fuel the growth of the of and the interest rates of the of the business. Right. Last question on housing loans that you're doing, what is the yield broadly that you are getting? Uh, the so home loan that you're pilot? 8.95 right now. That's the yield which we are getting the loans at right now. So that's the yield. Okay. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shubhranshu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening, uh, Shubhranshu here. Yeah. So, uh, just, uh, just on the vehicle finance part, sir, what proportion of our vehicle finance is for uh, is to SRTOs and what proportion is to the fleet operators? And uh, what uh, what is the credit risk management that we do? What kind of collection architecture we have, and what's the one plus that we uh, one plus BPD we had in the Sridham who runs this business. Let him answer this. Yeah, sixty five percent of the book is for SRT works. Right. And uh, what is the one plus and the collection architecture in this business now? So we uh, we don't uh, share the one plus BPD because uh, there are always operational delays that happen. Uh, people travel around the country, so uh, there will be you know quite a bit of people between one to thirty DPD. But uh, over a period of time, you get back the collections. So uh, uh, whatever is the uh, uh, you know slippage etc. are uh, you know only if you are thirty to ninety, then only that case comes in. But I'll uh, let Sri Ram uh, articulate about the collection architecture. Yeah, you see, like uh, below the branches, like we have uh, separate collection uh, people. Like whether uh, a customer is in overdue or not, it, is, it gets assigned to a collection agent. And generally, yes, around 250 contracts. Understood, sir. And we offer vehicle plans from every branch, sir. Or is it some special branches? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for the management reconnecting. Thank you.
may go ahead. Yeah, on the collection piece, like we have branches, below branches, we have separate collection uh, executives who handle not only like uh, overdue contracts, but also other contracts which are not, uh, which are in no due. So nearly 250 customers get allotted to each collection assistant. And the above branches, it is all like we do business and collection together. Unlike other bankers, like we do not have a separate vertical uh, for uh, collection and business. Above business, like all the hierarchy is for both business and collection together. And uh, uh, yeah, and all the collection executives are uh, tra DRA trained and um, we have uh, certificates. And even reposition, nearly 50% to 60% are handled in house by our collection executives. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Suman Katpalia for closing comments. So thank you for joining the call. Uh, if there are any other further questions, then you, will definitely, you can definitely call up me or Indrajit. And we'll, of course, have one-on-one -on -one calls starting tomorrow onwards, and we can, we can discuss. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Innocent Bank Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.